Happy New Year's, crafty friends. I'm coming on today from the science lab. So, you know, I got these mica powders from Hippie Crafter recently, and I told you as soon as I got my paint palettes from Amazon that I was going to make myself a set of watercolors. So I've started here. So let me show you. These are the paint pans. This came in a set of two. So you get the paint pans, and I got... I think, it, I think it comes with 50 of these little half pans. And so I got some watercolors uh, for Christmas, some handmade watercolors. And they had put little magnets on the back of each pan so that they would stay in the trays. So I had these magnets. So yesterday, last night when I got these, I went ahead and um, E6000 a magnet to the bottom of every little pan. So they'd be ready. Okay. So, now here comes the fun part. So, I have experimented, you can see, right here. And I already showed you how nicely th this paint. So, I know my formula is good. Um, so, I had... Now, I've seen... I, w I watch videos. I watched a ton of videos on how to do this. And there's all kinds of them. A lot of people just put it on their pad. They mix it up. And then they scrape it up. Uh, which I don't know. I'm, I might. No. Because I don't like all that cleanup. <laughs> so I'd rather use these little jars. And I have them. And I can keep them for my mixing jars. I could even paint out of them if I wanted to. Um. You know, you're probably saying, well, why didn't you just mix them in that to begin with? Because I wanted a beautiful little paint palette, and I wanted to do some scientific playing. Okay, so here's my tools. I have my mica powders. Now, these I've already made. And so I'm trying to keep them in order because I'm trying to decide if I want to label them. Which I probably will. I'll probably take a Sharpie and write on them the color. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Because I could write it right on the side of the pan and it would stay there. And then I can make me a little color swatch to go in the lid of my box. Alright, so these are my tools. I have the spatula, I have a plastic spoon, I have some toothpicks. And I'm not even going to need them because now I've switched over to the spatula. Alright, so let me move those out of the way. See, it's ever evolving. So, this is what you need. Liquid gum arabic, and this is what um, makes your mica powder, turns it into a, a paint, basically, that won't rub off. It's what, it's what gives it, for instance, if you just uh, brush this on or used it with Versamark, you would probably need to spray it with hairspray or some sort of sealant so that it wouldn't smear. And if by using this, you don't have to do that. Okay, that's ingredient one. I'll put that there. She's, and you can buy this at Amazon. Of course, I tried to buy it at Hobby Lobby and um, Michael's and no, they don't have it. They have the powder kind. And then the powder kind, you have to put boiling water in it and blah, blah, blah. I didn't want to do that. All right, so then... From my research, I found that a drop of glycerin makes it paint smoother. Just the drops, all you have to put in there. So, this, um, I actually had this. You know, you can use it on your skin. Anyway, it's glycerin, vegetable glycerin. And then, a lot of people add one drop of oil of cloves, or they said that you could use any kind of essential oil. And I had this, Christmas Spirit, and it smells so good. It's like cinnamony, orangey. It's got some cloves in it, too. And that's sort of optional. It's supposed to um, sort of act as a preservative. I don't know. I've never had any watercolor paint that got gross or <laughs> needed preserving that I knew of, but okay. But I did smell some of the ones that I got for Christmas, and they did have a scent of cloves. So, apparently, the people that do this for a living, you know, they they use it. So, I thought, okay, well, and there's nothing like picking up your paint and sniffing it, and it smells good, and then when you, 
it doesn't really leave a scent on your paper but so you know that's optional okay now let's cut to the chase so I got my little jar here let's make some pastel purple so these are from the hippie crafter like I said and they come so full and of course look at that mmm deliciousness so I'm using this little baby spoon to carefully now I'm gonna fill this jar half full with the powder more or less my measurements are are not exact so that's more like three-fourths and that's fine look at that spoon Woo. all right and then I can always add more if I get to too much liquid but that doesn't really happen or hasn't so far I should say all right now I'm gonna wipe my spoon off right now so that there is no danger of me accidentally sticking it in something else and you see I have spilled a little bit no worries all right so there's my um, mixture of that now I had a pipette but I think that I oh wait no baby they're just gonna suck it up huh. okay so I'm putting oh that was an accident <laughs> see science experiments with me all of me there will be a mess all right so I'm gonna put probably about 15 drops of this in there and I'm gonna squeeze it out lay it on my paper towel and put the lid on this because I don't know how fast this dries out but you know I'm not taking any chances well let me tidy up my mess just a little bit oh that didn't tidy it up very well did it okay well good enough now then I'm gonna throw that one away and get another one okay so a drop of glycerin you can just eyeball that that and then a drop of your fragrance oh I got two drops see told you no science now then you're gonna add about the same amount of water one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, now here's the, the coolest thing. So I've got my little spatula. I'm gonna start stirring. I am on screen, aren't I? Um, and as you start to stir, you see it start melting. It's like it melts into this molten um, uh, yumminess. Okay, so that's a little stiff, I can see. So I'm going to add some more water. And I just added, I mean, I didn't count the drops. Because like I said, after you do it one time, you'll be like, okay, I get it. It's more seeing the consistency. And at this point, what you're wanting to do is make sure that everything, that there's no lumps in it. Now I'm about to show you something that I think is just so cool. All right, so, so look. It looks, see, it won't even come off of there because it's stiff, but it's liquid. It's called a non-Newtonium mix. Okay, so then I'm going to fill up my little pan. So, Ooh. all right. So now, and see, so I still have this <clears throat> pot, and you know, you can make a half a pot and then come back and re and fill the rest of it up. So. Alright, <clears throat> so I'm 
so let me put that there. Now watch this. Let me pop that little bubble. Maybe. Or maybe not. Okay. And look at that. Ooh. Okay, watch this. See how when you tap it, it looks like it starts turning into a liquid? And look. <sighs> Y'all know I love me some, some, some crafty experimentations. But this is past exp experimentations because I, I got it now. I'm going to have me the most beautiful pan of um, metallic paints ever. All right, so let's see. What color shall we go for now? How about orange? This is called orange yellow. So I'm going to mix this color and then I'm going to end this video. And when I finish with my whole set, I'll come back and show you and paint with it. So you need to let this dry, um, let your paints dry out because you don't want to. Uh, I'm trying to figure out just the right amount to fill two pans completely since I have two sets. Haven't gotten to that point yet. And my container may not be big enough. Um, you want to make sure that it's they have completely dried out and hardened um, before you close the lid on them because obviously anything that you don't let um, dry out and try to seal up, it's either going to make a mess or uh, mold. So you don't want that for sure. Okay. Gum Arabic. Liquid gum Arabic, I should say. And there's a child perf cap on it, which I sometimes have trouble with. And you know what? I might not have to add that much. I don't really know. I'm just kind of going by what other people um, said. And basically, like I said, it's a it's the setting agent. That's what we'll call it. The setting agent. There we go. And then and I'm not even measuring this time. I'm just going to squirt that whole thing in there. Okay. And these um, are expensive. These uh, beautiful colors. If you if you buy them, you know, singly or a set of them, like on Etsy. Another reason why I was determined that I wanted to figure out how to make them myself. You know, I do have a tendency to do that kind of thing anyway. And I love it. I, I love. I absolutely love that that non Newtonium thing. It's so cool. Just a little bit more. Still seems a little crunchy. So basically, you can tell when it's the right consistency. When you you know you have it all stirred up, okay. And you can tap it like that, and it'll just smooth itself out. That is your perfect recipe. Let me give it one more stir. Fill her up. Oh, that was a good one. Let's see if I got my my proportions just right now.
Looky there, looky there. Oh, get back in there. Okay, so there's your little science lesson for the day, for the new year. And like I said, I will be back when I have the whole set done. And now that I know how, uh, nothing is safe. Just let me say that. Y'all know how I am. <laughs> All right. I hope y'all enjoyed this crafty lesson. And um, get yourself some of these and play. You won't be sorry. I'm telling you, you won't be sorry. It's that easy. All right. I hope y'all have a wonderful new year. Thank you all my subscribers for last year. It was a wonderful year. Thank you for everybody's encouragement and their creativity and their inspiration. Um, I love the YouTube crafty world. It's filled with all kinds of people from all over the world who just have so much to share and give. And I just think it's a wonderful thing. And I'm so thankful for each one of you. Alrighty. Happy New Year. Blessings.